It's always like your birthday with a package from China, so let's go. <laughs> so when I'm looking into AliExpress, I always find these weird looking devices. But this particular one really intrigued my curiosity. And the reason why, because this thing can play original Mega Drive games. This thing is called a 16-bit Pocket MD or Mega Drive. Having the option to also plug it into your television, so make it more like a hybrid system. That is freaking awesome. So in the past I did review a similar product, and I can tell you it was pretty damn bad. Didn't have an IPS display, it just came with a poor AVL signal, and it died off like I think it was like 15 hours later. It was pretty damn bad. But I just wanted to give it another try. We're going to try it out with all kinds of original games I'm having, even a flash card, homebrew games, and a multi-game card. I just want to test it just to see what are we going to get and is this thing worth picking up. The preview one even came with some built-in games. This one doesn't have any built-in games whatsoever. So there's nothing inside the box, just having plastic, an AV out cable and then we have like the system itself. The first thing is like it feels quite heavy, so that's a positive thing. Because if it's like feeling cheap to the cheap cheap, it's not going to be any good. So we in the inside. Do have the batteries? <laughs> it came with it, but I just wanted to show you that I like batteries in here. I really hate, hate the system like this that we do have like normal batteries. Man, it's going back in the 90s. What a freaking nightmare. Another thing I didn't really like is the cheap feel of the dust cover. Sometimes it even gets stuck. But let's grab myself a game and also like try it out how it basically feels when putting in a game. The device does have the option to give it like an input so you don't need to have the batteries. And here we have like an AV out and that's basically of course for yep, the TV out function. The D-pad itself, that is a different story. The D-pad is quite small and it feels very sturdy and not in a good way. Like I don't know it's going to be playing so we're going to try it out with some fighting games. We do have the six button configuration so we can basically play every single game. We have start, mode and here we have the reset. So basically that's all the thing that we're going to need. Here we have like a separate headphone jack out, so that's pretty damn awesome. The on and off switch and here we have like the volume control. There is only one speaker in here, so I'm curious how this is really going to be sound or how it is going to be sounding when playing some games. But let's put the batteries back in. It's going to be like a freaking challenge and let's try some games. Okay, so let's test it with some cartridges. How does it basically feel? So let's put it in. Okay, this is the multi-game card. It goes in very well. Let's wiggle it a little bit to pull it out. This is the flash card. Same story. It tightens up very well, and that is a good thing because you don't need to be afraid when you bump it. Then we're going to get like a freezing screen. And here I have like the fake one, the homebrew game. And I can tell you, like, that one doesn't fit very well, but that's because it's a cheap plastic shell. Also, let's boot it up. I'm going to show you that yeah, you can see there is no built in games. Let's remove the screen protector. There's a very thick one. Alright, so I think they just used this plexi at the front, so it's going to be like not great against scratches. But let's, yeah, let's put in some games and let's have some fun. The only downside I found to this thing is that we don't have any, let's say, option to change the region. So when you have like a homebrew game or an original game, you're going to get the message. So that's a little bit of a bummer. So kind of funny, so this thing runs on the basically a different region, the Japanese region, because you can see like Street of Rage 2, I've got the ball game, but it shows bare knuckle too. All right, so let's do a quick audio test and a visual test. It doesn't go very loud. You can see like it's quite difficult to record from the display because it's going to be having like a very annoying, like reflective plexi at the front. But here you can see like the display in general. Let's shut down the freaking Let's shut down the big light above me So you can see like the display they're using is not super bad Okay, it's basically like not very loud It's okay for the audio let's give you an up close to the speaker so you can hear how it sounds Okay, so let's play some Street of Rage. A 
I really need to get used to the D-pad, but... It's not bad at all. You need to press the direction notes very hard. Get at least a normal, decent gameplay out of it. The next thing I can do maybe is like plug in the headphone, plug it into the camera so you can basically enjoy some music from the system itself. Alright, so next up, let's try the combination of Sonic 3 and Knuckles, and here you can see it works very well. Pretty now awesome. Let's see if we still have a safe game over here. I didn't play this game a lot. I was like back in the day, I did own a card which I basically like used every single way to play the game, like having every single like some emerald collection. But it seems to be. Why do you get a feeling my freaking battery is dead inside of this freaking game? But if you can wiggle the lounge, let's see what happens. Okay, so you can see like it's not super proof and the reason why, and let's show you why this is. So we're going to remove Sonic 3 of it. Let's close it. Let's put only the circle Sonic and Knuckles game in it. And that's what I really like about it. What I've seen with a lot of devices from China that we kind of play and wiggle around with it. If you're going to do that, it's going to be freezing the game all the time. Of course, having multiple card, which is it's going to be slightly difficult, of course. But overall, when you're looking at the gameplay and everything, I think it's not a bad thing. And also, I love the way how the display looks. It's not like the best, brightest IPS display you can get. But it's so much better than we've seen before. Okay, so let's try some different games. So, the combination of Sonic 3 and Knuckles works, so I'm in. I'm happy. Okay, let's see. Let's try some different stuff on this. You can see a multi game card loads up without any problem. But I'm seeing that we do have some issues. Oh, CP War. Okay, well, that's weird. It froze and now it does start up. Okay. Weirdness. Okay, so shall we reset it again? Okay, so now it's basically boot up in the game. Let's turn it on and off. Okay, that's kind of weird. So basically it freezes, but when you're going to reset it... No, that didn't work this time. So, oh, there it is. Okay, that is kind of weird. So it freezes, but when you reset it, it will automatically boot up in the game. Okay. All right, so let's see what happens if we're going to load up a game. Load and start. That's going to be the old school Grid Mega Everdrive. But I don't want to see if we do have like the same issues when it comes to playing with a multi-game card. Man, it takes forever. Man, this thing's freaking slow. Oh, I need to get myself a new flash card. That's a fact. But for now, let's wait. Let's wait. Oh, it's reading the file. Finally. Oh, boy. I don't miss these old multi game cards. But yeah, most of the time they're like cheap to the cheap cheap. So we can't really complain. And also, depending how big the file is, there's also like a reason why it basically loads up very long. Okay, loads up. So we can play Sonic 3 Knuckles this way, so no problem whatsoever. Ah, we even have a save file. That's convenient. We do have that stupid intro again. Oh man, I hate that intro. I do like the one from Sonic Mania. 
But yeah, so flashcards seem to be working fine. So if you just want to play this way, there's an option. It seems to be working better than a multi-game guard somehow. Kind of weird. All right, so let's try one of my favorite games to play on there. Okay, what I love about this is that we do have like the sync button configuration so we can shoot in every single direction. It makes the game so much better and more playable. Oh, spread shot, love it. Oh, this game is so freaking annoying sometimes. I'm even going to play it on the highest difficulty. Most of the time I'm just going to put it on freaking like on the easy mode. Another fun thing is like, I don't know if I'm only one over here, but I bought this game on seriously everything. And Evergate, the Mega Drive, the Dreamcast, and even my PC. I don't know why I keep doing it, but... That was quickly. All right, you know, let's move to the television. Let's have some fun with that. Okay, so when it comes to the TV out function, it works perfectly. You're just going to plug it in and that's it. And just gonna play the game. That was a very quick gameplay, but you're getting the point. The audio quality is very good. It comes out of the cable. Let's go. Oh man, the D-pad. This game is such a pain in the ass. Ah, 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 ah. I suck at this game. All right, giggity giggity giggity. Let's take a close look in the inside because I'm curious. Oh, before we're going to do that, let's remove the batteries. Oh, I really hate this compartment. So that's one of the things they should improve. It's like adding some freaking like normal like ways to add, let's say like a built-in battery. That would be so much better. Funny thing is like the first, as I say, the Sega Nomad from China I've reviewed did had a built-in battery, if I'm recalling it correctly. Yeah, that had built-in battery. So it's kind of weird that sometimes they do and sometimes they don't. And another thing is like the region switch is absolutely missing. So because I am limited to the certain things I can play on this. So it's a little bit of a bummer. There was always something they mess up. No, don't fall in there. Thank you. And then we need to remove the sticker over here because there is the another screw. Oh crap. All right. Uh, there is something loose, but I will find it later on. Well, let's see, I can open it up. All right. All right, well, let's be very gentle with this. I don't know what just fell down, but no idea. Well, that's an interesting way how they made this. Okay, so everything has been sold and straight into the main board. Can we just lift this out or are there any screws? Now there are screws. There are screws in the PCB. Right, let's put these aside, otherwise I'm going to lose them. It's always fascinating to see how they made this. Okay, so the first thing I wanted to see the build year. So this thing is made in 2019, so when making this video, it's already some years old. I really find it cool to see, like, they basically, like, sold in this extra PCB board on here. Here it says phone or headphone. Let's move the, remove this screw over here. That basically put everything in its position and holds it in a position. All right, these things are basically sliding off, so let's do that. Oof. Let's be very gentle. Oh, damn it. There's a... 
Oh, there's another screw. Let's see how, how this looks. All right, now we can lift it out. Be very gentle. We still have the display. Ah, so that was the thing that I've seen on the side. So this is this tiny speaker. So they are using combination of, let's say, the gray membrane buttons over here and the white ones over there. Okay. But a quite interesting thing to look at. Here you can see like the D-pad, how it's looking. It's quite a different way they assemble this. All right, so let's swap the display or put it in different side so i am just going to be honest i don't know what everything is at this point so it's quite interesting to see this chip over here with the back blob i'm guessing this will be the processor but also you can see like it's a separate pcb that they basically stacked on here we do have a capacitor also here we do have like the membranes the gray ones the better quality ones and the positive thing is like if you want to replace the display and you can find a good one you can basically replace it so also that is very positive so this is running on a tct 6803 so basically this is the cpu that we have seen before and i mean like we have seen it with the previous like say homebrew systems and let's take a close look at the chip over here okay it's very difficult to read but basically this is the other chip that we're going to get on here but this is what we're going to get inside the machine itself. I just want to do a quick teardown because I know a lot of you love me seeing ripping things apart. I personally really love ripping everything apart. Okay, let's put it back together so we can actually use it in the future. Another thing I find quite interesting over here, you can see like they're using these, let's say, double-sided pad or rubberized pad. I don't know exactly how to call these things. But they're trying to basically add these things to position the display in the right place. But today's video, we do got something pretty decent, and it's not perfect, don't get me wrong, it's not a 10 out of 10 or a 9 out of 10, absolutely not. So to begin with, so what I don't really like about this. So the display, I like it, but I don't like the size of it. And yeah, so for the people who are like having the same thing, like the problem with tiny displays, they want to have like a, at least a 5 inch, yeah, you should avoid this thing. Of course, it makes it very compact. Downside to this with the game cartridges, we don't have the support for every single game. I didn't see any switch that we can switch between regions. So yeah, and the battery life. Yeah, I cannot really tell how much it is because depending on what kind of batteries you're using, I wish they like added a lithium battery inside. It would be so cool to charge it up and just play it for many hours. Let me know in the comments what you think of something like this. Would you consider picking it up? Want to thank you for watching. Give this video a like if you want to. And would be great to subscribe and see you in the next video.